Hello and welcome to the World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco and I've got a couple of things I want to talk to you about today. One is how the creators of now have created our reality in their structured and very controlling way and how it's led to what we live in right now. Second thing I want to talk about is the alternative media. Big stuff's happening with the alternative media. It seems to be at least bifurcating. Bifurcating meaning dividing into two separate parts. It could be more than that. But I see part of it becoming very active, very political, and really making stuff happen. They're coming uh, out of their role as just an, inform, uh, an, in, an informative source. They're getting into really activism, and I, I really love it. And then there's the other part of the media. Unfortunately, that part of the media is becoming less and less recognizable from the mainstream media. And it looks like as the mainstream media falls away and people become more and more awakened, this part of the alternative media will assume the role as the controlled media. Now, I hope that's not going to happen. And I hope what I'm seeing now is just an apparition of something else other than the more controlling of the alternative media. But anyway, let's start off by my seeding us into what we're doing. Let's, let's position us in what's going on in the world. I think we're going through the apocalypse. Now, the apocalypse in the original Greek definition is like the awakening, the unveiling, the finding out, and that certainly is what's happening. I mean, if you look at what you knew about what was going on in the world 10 years ago and what you know now, it's, it's probably 180 degrees different. It's really different. And if you go five years ago, there'll be a big difference. For us now, it's bi-week. Something new pops open that we couldn't even consider bi-weekly. Now, the control system that's making these things happen is very, very controlled. Nothing happens by accident. Everything is linked together, all part of the grand plan. And as they weave through this, they get feedback. And so they can change and make it perfect for the future. Nothing is random. And as we go through a little review of history, I think you'll realize how really controlled the reality that we live in is now. Why, why are they doing this? Who, who's doing it and why are they doing this are good questions. Now, I've been thinking about this a lot. Matter of fact, I think about hardly anything else. And the black and white characterizations of what's going on in this planet or this plane doesn't, doesn't suit me. It seems a lot more complicated than that. There's, it's happening on all different levels. It's affecting people in different ways. We're having different outcomes. It's an amazing, amazing process. And we're going through it in a very controlled, very structured way. And as we awaken, the control system is there to retrap us or to perhaps uh, guide our awakening. Who knows? But let's look at our, what our reality looks like right now. All right, well, let's talk about some facts about the matrix that you, you may or may not know. What you know as your history, your belief, your concept of normal life, well, I'll tell you, it's all been orchestrated for you. The 20th century elements like Tavistock, the Tavistock Institute, which rules all of the major think tanks throughout the world and has throughout the 20th century. The Frankfurt School, who moved to New York and set up what they call a critical theory, has just about wrecked all the Western institutions, including uh, logical sexual functioning. How about a quick walk down memory lane? At the turn of the 20th century, the Rockefeller, Standard Oil, was addicting us to the gasoline-powered motor car roads, and of course, pollution. Even though the dark elites had levitation technology they had stolen from John Keeley back in 1860, 
we were confined to oil-based polluting technology, and we're still kept in this yoke to this day. Both world wars were staged events started by false flag terrorism. All the parties, Germany, U.S., Japan, were, were created and funded by the same source to achieve the war and to achieve their ends. There was never a good war. Just poor saps tricked into sacrificing their lives because of propaganda. Of course, prohibition was orchestrated to make them richer in the 20s, and we were dumped into the Depression for that same reason. Nothing that you can point to in history was not orchestrated for us by our controllers for their benefit in our subsequent positioning to where we are. The Cold War was staged for the enrichment of the military-industrial complex, among other factors. At some point, TV, the greatest brainwashing mechanism ever invented, was put into society, while the CIA and other alphabet agencies worked on mind control. The most effective, they found, was trauma-based mind control. The slaves and handlers were introduced in society. Today, it's difficult to find a famous person or somebody that's in your consciousness, that they've put in your consciousness. I call them lifetime actors. That's not either a mind control slave or a handler or both. The space program is a farce. No one has gone to the moon, nor will they ever. Do your research. The hippie movement, called in the vernacular of the Tavistock Institute, the Aquarian Conspiracy, was staged. It was used to break up the peace movement and the civil rights movement. There was nothing organic about it or the music. The Beatles' music was a product of Tavistock and probably of one Theodore Adorno, a brilliant musician and mind control specialist. You must realize that all popular music was created by the controllers, including jazz, rock and roll, rap, trance. All of it was created for their purpose. The manipulations of certain portions of society. Now, the civil rights movement, that was a Tavistock creation. Rockefeller funded the creation of Martin Luther King. Just look it up. Now its slimy afterbirth remains in the form of Black Lives Matter. Neither movement had or have anything to do with helping minorities. It's simply that people that are impoverished, forced into the victim role, or easily manipulated to do the bidding of the overlords. And oh my God, look at what cultural Marxism, the fashion industry, have done to black men. Now this is just during my sojourn on the plane. Feminism was created by the Illuminati, initially to give a larger tax base. When the women entered the workforce, more people to tax, and also get control of the children at an earlier age. Now it's complete, and its most modern incarnation is totally emasculating the whole society. Social justice warriors were created by cultural Marxism uh, which also created the last key kids, which turned into the social justice snowflakes. So if you don't believe me, I hope you listen with some skepticism at least. You can begin by reading books by John Coleman on the Committee of 300, Tavistock Institute. If you haven't read them, it's a good place to start. You must know that the internet is a product of CERN. Yes, the opening of the Portal Company launched the web in 1989. Originally, it was supposed to be a way of sharing professional documents. 
Now it's one of their main tools of control. Theoretically, as freedom is withdrawn from this tool, you will slide easily into 1984 hive mind. That's the plan. Social media, made possible by this invention, plays a major role in your enslavement and your control. It's a great way to monitor your activities, influence social patterns, and allow them, the controllers, to understand how certain interventions, like false flags or election results, have been received so that they can modify your reality to suit the control system. It's basically the matrix. The internet is basically the matrix. The mainstream media, including print media, Hollywood, and TV, is owned and operated for your control by the controllers of the matrix. TV uses sigils, symbols, subliminals, hypnotism, drug addiction, predictive programming, and lies to create a reality that's anything but true. It's the reality that they want you to live in. In this reality, it's a tiny reality, they have already trapped us in, and it's morphing day by day, and you can watch it on TV, into a perverted, demented, ignorant, idiocracy-like culture twerking and humping humanity into a dubious future. Listen, do you really think that Bruce Jenner is a hero? Or that Islam is a religion of peace? How about the fact that freedom of speech is a bad idea? Or do you really think having 53 genders will help society? For most of those involved in the awakening, this media is a thing of the past, as they have awakened beyond it. Now, everybody that's awakening is switching to the alternative media. Keep in mind that the control system in many ways did invent the alternative media. First of all, they invented the web. Second of all, the mainstream media has been so bad and so misleading that as we awaken, it's created the, the need for the alternative media. And third of all, I'm sure they knew this from the beginning, that the alternative media is media. And it can be made to serve the same purpose as the mainstream media. And quite frankly, I think this is what's happening more and more right now. A section of the alternative media, now not all of it, is moving into the control and misinformation service. I hope I'm wrong on this, but it really looks like this. So you must be flexible and constantly question your choice of the alternative media. Because as we get further and further down the road, the alternative media will definitely supplant the mainstream as a source for groupthink and to mislead us deeper and deeper into the matrix. The alternative media will lead us as people awaken. So everyone must be very discerning at all time. Now there are two trends that I see the alternative media taking that are obviously a sign of attempts to mislead the public. One is the coverage of the Islamic terrorism as opposed to Zionist-based false Islamic terrorism. And second of all is the coverage of the sham of the presidential election in the U.S. Actually, I'm glad these things are happening because it's, it makes uh, the media that are going in this direction so much more vivid. Many alternative media do not attempt to differentiate between the true Islamic terrorism and Zionist terrorism. They might even call another alternative media out for debunking a false flag by calling them conspiracy theorists. Get that conspiracy theorists. That's right, I've heard that many times. These alternative media should be debunking and proving the false flags rather than jumping on the bandwagon blaming Islam. I was jolted into this reality after posting this clip on our blog. We're here in Dresden covering Bilderberg, but of course we've had the massacre in Orlando, Florida. 20 people, now they're saying up to 30, shot dead by an individual who has been identified as Omar Mateen, uh, somebody of Afghan descent, who of course is a Muslim and the religion of peace strikes. Again, imagine my shock. So the top trending hashtag on Twitter right now is gun control now. That's right, the trendies are already out in force trying to seize on that narrative. They don't seem to be as concerned about the fact that in 11 Islamic countries, gay people are executed. 
That's right, in 11 countries, state execution of homosexuals is still government policy. So where's the hashtag stop Islam now? Now, now I love this reporter. So handsome, articulate, and bright, and animated. I love his rants. I posted it, and it was in a short period of time that an astute follower pointed out two things. One is that it occurred during the Bilderberg Group meeting. That should be a red flag that it might be a false flag orchestrated by the CIA to get the pressure off of Bilderberg. And two, this particular false flag had CIA written all over it. But Islam was never removed from the blame. This outlet still treats this false flag as real Islamic terror event. Now from his boss, likely the most talented and knowledgeable man on the web, we get this second misdirection. This man knows what's up, and when he bullshits you, he knows what he's doing. The attacks in Orlando were a false flag terror attack. But before the mainstream media takes that out of context, I want to be clear. Our government and the governments of Europe allowed these huge hordes of radical jihadis in and have even allowed them in without vetting them on record, landing at airports across the country and not even checking their passports, IDs, or visas. Our governments are bringing these people in and they're allowing them to operate openly in our society so they can attack us and then have our freedoms taken. So radical Islam is real. It's growing like a cancer. They kill each other in their own countries. It is a civil war religion of destabilization and slavery. You can argue what it's been in the past, but it certainly is that today with Saudi Arabia quarterbacking the whole deal. So, yes, it's a false flag in that our government let it happen. Okay, so he says that it was a false flag because the government let these people in. I personally knew by the 12th of June when this second comment was made that the perpetrator was the son of a CIA guy and they worked for a deep dark government contractor and that he, like all the other actors in this particular scene, were indeed card-carrying actors. This false flag was so transparent, purposely, actually, to distract the truther community from the Bilderberg, that it didn't even bother to dispatch ambulances. The fellow actors were carrying the actors to the hospital. Come on, it was so obvious. So in this case, it seemed obvious to me that this alternative media's assigned job was to underscore the threat of Islam. How do you get a clash of civilizations without the media pumping it? Now, personally, I think Islam is the biggest collection of bad ideas on the plane, but it didn't cause the pulse shooting. The second agenda is right, was right on target for this, this particular alternative outlet, which is to focus on the lefties' gun control agenda. This is correctly in defense of the Constitution. Bravo for Alex. Although really, if the Luciferian controllers wanted a heavy armed public for a staged event to follow, Alex and his crew made it happen. I agree with Alex on this, and I think that uh, exposing the lefties' agenda is important. In an article by Makia Freeman, entitled Parts of the Independent Media Losing Their Compass, she said, You have to acknowledge a problem before you can handle it. However, they, the alternative media, have failed to recognize the real force behind Islamic terrorism, Zionism. It's really the Zionist regime and their intelligence agencies like Mossad who are engineering so many of the false flag events that end up getting blamed on Islamic terrorism and ISIS. Israel has its dirty fingerprints all over 911, the original granddaddy of the false flag events that brought Islamic terrorism to the forefront of people's minds as the, quote, new enemy to fear and hate at the beginning of the 21st century. ISIS is the pet Frankenstein developed by the CIA and Mossad, there are numerous clues in all the European false flag attacks of 2015 and 2016, especially in France and Belgium, that the Mossad was involved. We know that the Israeli front group, S-I-T-E, led by Israeli agent Rita Katz, 
conveniently finds and releases ISIS and other Islamic terrorist footage before the terrorists themselves do. Even the former DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency Director Michael Flynn, admitted that the U.S. was helping to create a fundamentalist Salafist group in the area that became ISIS. Yet despite so much evidence of Zionist involvement, we still see respected alternative media researchers and journalists like Jeff Rents, Rents.com, Alex Jones, Infowars.com, and Dave Hodges, the Common Sense Show.org, and many others talk about the threat of ISIS to the USA. Laughably absurd, since the U.S. has created and funded ISIS all along. And they talk about Islamic terrorism as though it were a real independent phenomenon. Time to wake up, guys. It's controlled chaos. It's social engineering. You're losing credibility big time by buying into it. Now, I know there are real independent Islamic terror events. It's important that you can see the difference. We just made a world beyond belief showing 21 ways to uh, tell a false flag. It's good information because you really have to know the difference because one's truth and one's a lie. Now, the other problem I have is with the election coverage. Now, it was obvious to me and many people early this spring that the circus that they call the presidential election was a ploy by Soros, Clinton, Rockefeller, and the cabal to divide the country, start a race war, and make whomever was selected a no-brainer to impose martial law. After this election cycle, the country will be in shambles. Police are now being villainized to be replaced with the UN troops. Blacks hate whites, and it's socially acceptable to the cultural Marxists for blacks to kill whites. Just take a look at what this country will be like in November. Remember the DNC? What a stage show with paid seat fillers replacing disgruntled delegates. What a sham. But not if you follow the controlled alternative media. They contend that the election means something. I guess they slept through the two previous administrations that simply carried forth the controller's agenda. No promises ever kept, at least in the way the voters expected. Makia Freeman chimes in. Alternative media support for Trump drinking the Trump Kool-Aid. As I said above, election season can bring out the worst in people in the sense that people fall so deep into duality, get so entrenched in the meaningless and fake left-right paradigm, get so caught up in being right and making someone else wrong, and ultimately go deeper into unconsciousness by making new opponents and enemies. It's pretty sad to see. The support dished out to Donald Trump, probable pedophile, ardent Zionist, and highly connected to the New World Order, by Rents, Jones, and many others, is extremely disappointing. They have fallen so deeply into the Democrat versus Republican trap, when both parties have long been controlled by the same force, that they may as well work for the conservative arm of the MSM. By drinking the Trump Kool-Aid so much, they have made the mistake of confusing what they want to believe is true with what actually is and in doing so, severely damaging their credibility. Well, I'm not as kind as Makia. These are intelligent, successful, and very knowledgeable men, representing themselves as purveyors of truth and taking a leadership role as the country, and indeed the world, goes through their darkest hour. They know right from wrong. They are well aware of what they're saying and what influence they have. When you present various members of the CNP, the right-wing CFR, as independent commentators, you're practicing deceit. From my standpoint, I will not go back to these media outlets unless they begin to come clean on honest reporting, calling the election the sham that it is, and separating false flag events staged by Zionist Islamicists from real events. They have to know that we need truth and honesty right now not iodine potions, the false right-left paradigm delineations, or covering for the U.S. created ISIS. We need to be calling the Zionist-sponsored terror, Zionist-sponsored false flag terror. Now, I, I sincerely hate it to have to come 
and call these guys out on these, what I see are misdirections, looks like they might be controlled. Because these guys, you know, I'm like most of you, they've contributed, I mean, Rents and Jones and uh, Dave Hodges have contributed to my awakening as they had have yours. But we have to keep an eye on them. We have to realize what they're doing and maybe they're being misled. You know, who knows? But these are two things I just thought I'd bring to your attention. Now, the alternative media is really catching fire. There's some, there's some really people who are really sending out good information. I could mention 25 maybe, but let's go wearechange.org and Luke Rutkowski. He's always coming up with up to the minute things, breaking news, and does really some insightful analysis. There are new things happening. There's a thing called Newsbud, started by Sybil Edmonds. And they're not just producing news, doing real journalism, but they're calling the mainstream media on falling down. And they're getting nations involved in holding the mainstream media accountable. They're really being activists. Another one I always like to mention is uh, Axe Apologetics. This is uh, a site by David Wood, who's an expert on the Christian religion in Islam. And if you know anything about Islam, you know that it's an ideology that doesn't fit with re any civilization since the 12th century. I mean, it's really uh, clunky, out of date, much in need of, of reformation. David Wood is pushing in that direction. He wants Muslims to wake up and find out what they're really worshiping so that it can be worked with, so that they can know what's going on. I think it's a wonderful site. And then I have to mention Truth Media Revolution. They're doing things called truth bombs, where when the mainstream media or controlled YouTubes bring out real totally bullshittish like information, he has his group go on, which I'm a member, and give them thumbs down to show that we know that it's false. But anyway, so I guess in, in the final analysis, you have to keep your eye on what's going on. Don't go to cult of personality with anybody. Keep everybody as, at an objective distance and be flexible. Thank you.